Hello. All right. For today's project, what I am going to be showing you how to make is this um, Star Trek Deep Space Nine uniform. And I am going to be doing the later season uniform because that is the pinnacle of uh, Starfleet fashion. Not that that's a really high bar. It's actually a very low bar, but I really do like these uniforms. And actually, uh, the Deep Space Nine uniform, or one of the Star Trek uniforms, was probably, I think, the first um, garment I ever tried to make in Marvelous Designer. Uh, so this is a really great beginner project because it's it's a glorified jumpsuit, really. Um, and there's a few complicated pieces, but I'll I'll walk you through those. Um, and so let's let's go ahead and get started. So I already have got started, as you can see. I've just made this basic uh, bodice shape that's um, pretty tight and form fitting. Uh, I use the darts to kind of uh, bring everything in, and I will be kind of uh, um, fast forwarding and time lapsing a lot of uh, some stuff because there's a lot to get to. So the pattern making stuff, where I'm just kind of tweaking patterns, I will be uh, time lapsing and not talking through. Uh, step by step and I have done um, I have explained stuff like that in other videos so I don't want to again there's a lot to get to okay so the thing we really want to focus on on this undershirt part here is the neckline and I've made the neckline pretty high up on the neck and that's because well let's look at some reference um, so this is one of the references I've got uh, this is an actual prop uniform that was, um, you know, on the show. So this is, we know this is accurate in terms of where all the seams and everything go. So we can use this as a good reference. Um, but we want to focus on this collar. Now this collar, I think, I'm pretty sure this is just a straight collar. It's just a flat rectangle that's um, wrapped around. Um, and the reason that's important uh, with this neckline is because if you have this neckline too low and you put on a flat collar like that without any shaping to kind of form it to your neck, um, you're going to get a kind of like floppy collar up here because the circumference on your collar is greater than the circumference where at the top of the collar. Um, as it is, this there will be some floppiness, but we'll we'll just kind of take that out uh, when we make this. Okay, so I'm just gonna dra drag out a rectangle here and I'm going to sew it to the neck like this. And I'm not worried about size right now because we can just check our sewing length and see that we're off you know, by that much. And so we just drag it in, check it, and now I'm off by 0 0.3 millimeters, which is fine. So now I will just superimpose over, uh, copy and symmetrically paste and superimpose over on the, or superimpose on the side so right click superimpose side and then simulate. Okay. okay, so as you can see, that's pretty good. It's it's still a little bit loose. Um, and now if this collar were, this neckline were, were wider, it would be much looser on top. So it is pretty important to try and get this pretty high up on the neck um, just so you don't have as much of a cone shape and it's, you know, kind of straight up and down. Um, to fix this, all I'm going to do is just double click on that and scale it down a little bit. And I'm actually going to delete the sewing on the bottom here. And so I can just get it to fit correctly. I don't want this collar to be tight. I want it to fit. A lot of people mistake um, or mix up being tight for fitting. Being tight does not mean that it fits. It just means that it's tight. So always watch out for that. Don't make your stuff too tight. Um, and this, I just want to be kind of snug uh, around the neck. So that can be even a little bit looser even. Yeah. So I'll just, okay. All right, now we're just going to sew it back on, and this is going to be, okay, it's only off by like 2.3 millimeters. And another thing, when you have it disconnected like this, you can actually, okay, so I made my neck way too 
perfect. But let's say I had my neck a little bit less than perfect on here, like this. So when you have your collar snugly fit, you know this is generally the position you want it to, you want it to be in. So now when you're looking at your um, collar like this, you can go ahead and adjust your neckline um, to kind of match up as closely as possible as this collar. So that would just need to be brought up and you can just kind of, okay, that's too high there. And you can kind of just manually adjust this neckline so that it matches up with the collar when the collar is just sitting snugly, again, not tight, snugly around the neck. And that will help you get it on there. And it doesn't have to be exact, it just needs to be close. All right, so go ahead and sew that back on. Maybe I'll tighten it up just a smidge. Okay. All right, and as long as the difference here is not too much, there shouldn't be any puckering around the neck or anything nasty. So that's how we do the neckline. Now, what I want to do um, for this collar is, um, is I want to create like these kind of stress wrinkles that get these compression uh, wrinkles around the neck and Marvelous designer doesn't really Do a great job in in Creating those types of wrink wrinkles and folds. So we're gonna kind of have to fake it a little bit um, And another thing is this collar up here um, is not just one layer of cloth This is actually a double layer of cloth. It's very very uh, thin fabric but this is actually folded over. Um, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna hit do both of those things at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of these collar pieces and I'm going to layer clone over, or not over, under, layer clone under, layer clone under, and then we will remove the linked editing and delete the sewing that they have around there. And then I'm going to reapply uh, symmetry. So apply linked editing, symmetric pattern with sewing. So those are symmetric cross crosswise and then I'm going to sew the bottom to the bottom and I want this to be a turned sewing line type and the top to the top and this is can be a custom angle and then we're going to go uh, there to there and back to back okay so when you simulate that kind of puffs out so we'll have to fix that um okay so first thing we want to do oh and I am using the fabric setting I'm using right now is a uh, cotton knit cotton jersey so just a t-shirt fabric so that's a preset i have for all this fabric is knit cotton jersey okay so let's take all four of these collar pieces and turn my uh particle distance down to five and i'm going to change my additional collision thickness from 2.5 to 0.5 because i want this to be a very thin fabric and then let's check that and that looks really nicely now, what I want to do to create these kind of compression wrinkles in the neck is I want to um, simply lower this just a bit, this inside collar, and that should pull this collar up over here down. But when I do that, it doesn't actually pull it down. It just kind of rolls up and over itself. So we need to stop it from doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two outside collar pieces and on the top and the bottom, I'm going to turn on seam taping. And I only want my width to be very narrow. So I'm going to go with two, a seam taping width of two. And I'm going to change my seam taping preset to uh, reinforcement under collar. Now, Marvelous Designer doesn't actually have this particular preset, um, but these are the numbers that you can actually just manually input and you'll get this preset. So if you wanted to just pause the video and manually input this, um, that would get you uh, reinforcement under collar. I really like the reinforcement under collar preset because it's more, it's a, a stronger effect than just the default fusible rigid, but not as aggressive, aggressively strong as trim full grain leather. It's kind of in a middle ground and I, I use it quite a bit. So I think it's a good preset to use. Okay. So once you've seam taped that outside piece, what I want to do 
is offset as internal line on this top line here. I'm going to offset by one millimeter, and I'm going to offset twice. Okay. Got two offsets there. And now let's go ahead and simulate. And so that kind of happens, which isn't great. So what we need to do is take these two internal lines that I made, and I'm going to change my fold angle and keep your, uh, hang on. Okay, so while your simulation is on, we want to start adjusting this fold angle and just use your slider to kind of slide down until, oops, not, don't go too far with it. Uh, that's too far, come on. Oh, what I should do. Okay, so let's go ahead and shorten this inside collar now. So I'm going to shorten this by only about five millimeters. So you can move the distance by clicking, uh, right clicking while you're clicking and dragging. So just five millimeters. Okay. Now I want to take these two pieces here. And we're just, that's too much. Let's go ahead and uh, strengthen the inside piece here real quick to get it to f this part in here to flatten out. Okay, so unstrengthen that now. Okay. So now if you have, okay, so as you pull your fold angle down, um, this, you just want it to get to where it's like that. Oh, and turn your fold rendering off. Okay, so for me, that's right now about 80 or so, I guess. Well, because you don't want to go, you don't want to go too far and you just want to get it to go flat like that. And then that kind of starts to create this um, puckering in the, uh, or this, those kind of, folds in the collar. And so essentially what I did is with that seam taping, I curved it, I, I created like a hook on the top of the collar so that when this inside gets pulled down, instead of rolling over with it, it actually uh, compresses the outside of the collar. So let me um, bring the inside of the collar down even a bit more. Okay, so there you go. Now you're starting to get some of those uh, kind of compression wrinkles. But again, they're kind of big and that's not really exactly what I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these two outside pieces and I'm going to go and turn skiv on and skiv thins out the fabric um, and it really amplifies the wrinkles and makes them just much smaller and like it's a very thin fabric. So I'm gonna turn this down to like 90. So I'm gonna turn my skiv effect to 90 now that didn't really change a whole lot. And part of the reason is because when you apply the skiv effect, um, because the wrinkles are much smaller and more delicate, I guess, um, you have to turn your particle distance down quite a bit to actually be able to see the effect. So I'm gonna turn my particle distance down to three. Okay, now you can start to see that these wrinkles are small and like that. Okay, and when you turn your skipping on, you might have to adjust the fold angle on, ooh, this is not, hang on. Oh, that's interesting, okay. On your collar to make it fit correctly. So, uh, just readjust that. Um, so these are kind of like, not exactly, in the right place. Um, and actually this might be too compressed. So I'm gonna just raise it up a bit. That should help with, okay. I just want this to be a really subtle effect. Okay. 
So it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my fabric and um, I'm going to change the preset on this new fabric to something like a cotton rayon jersey and I'm going to apply it just to the collar. So that's going to be a thinner, um, there we go, like a thinner cotton, a thinner, slightly heavier cotton that will give me a little bit more of what I'm looking for. And then I'll adjust the height on this inside collar again and compress it just a bit more. Okay. And then another thing you can do is with this fabric, um, this new fabric, the uh, cotton knit rayon, um, you can go into the presets and you can actually crank stuff like your friction way up and then that'll help these uh, wrinkles kind of stay in place as you move them because it'll make it kind of sticky or tack the fabric kind of tacky against each other so when you adjust the wrinkles with the hand they'll stay in place a little bit better. Let's raise it up even a bit here. And so these are really nice because they will, um, as you animate and pose the character, these wrinkles will, they're, they're not just static no matter what pose they're in, but they will be affected by like animation and things. So that's how you can get the, that kind of uh, really subtle compression look uh, to your collar here, okay. And there's there's a lot of ways you can adjust this. You can um, um, chain play with stuff like the pressure and pull the pressure in to you know make them really kind of sharper and and uh, different try different fabric properties and adjust your skiving percentage and that'll that'll change the look of this as well. But that's how you just get those really nice small little kind of compression folds in there. Okay. So what we want to do now is um, work on these this uh, these this front part the uh, whatever that is the piping in the front. Okay. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, to this front bodice piece and I'm going to offset by about seven millimeters and I'm going to offset just once. Okay. And then I will uh, cut this piece off and delete it. And I will also offset uh, these two color pieces by seven. Okay. okay, now I'm just going to create a rectangle and I want my width to be seven. So I'll make my width seven. And then I will sew this on. So I'll sew here to here. And then I'll use my free, using my free sewing, I will sew up until it snaps to that dot there. Okay, and then I will copy and symmetrically paste it across and sew the middle together and superimpose on the side just to get it into position and then kind of pull it out so it's not, okay, there we go. Okay, now what I wanna do is I want to cut this piece off the uh, outer part of the collar right here. So I'm just going to cut that and when you cut this, it does um, remove the skiving from that. So you'll have to reapply the skiv to the outside of your collar. Okay, now I'm just going to sew um, this piece onto the uh, piece that I cut off. So the outside of the collar, you can sew to there. Oh, not simulate yet. Yeah. Then I'm just going to add a point to the end here. So add a point to the sewing on the end and I will cut that. Got that. And so it works, matches up. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to take this piece and I'm going to right click on it and layer clone over. So there's layer cloning over. And I'm going to, again, remove the linked editing and delete the sewing that was on there. Okay, now I'm going to re-sew it on. So I'm going to sew using my segment sewing, just sew there to there and there to there. And I want those to be turned seams. And I want this top seam on the top to be just a regular custom angle seam. So now I just have this piece on top. Now I need to uh, create the puckering effect on here. Um, 
but there's a few things we have to do first. Um, so, well, let's just talk about how you create the puckering effect. To create the puckering effect, all you do is you just, you know, scale this piece down a bit. And it doesn't need to be too much bigger. Um, and then superimpose it over. And it starts to kind of create that puckering effect. Oh, the other thing I want to do is change my particle distance down to like two. And again, I'm not going to keep this at two. Now, you can see why one of the one of the reasons um, you do when you're working with these small trim pieces, one of the reasons you do need to turn your particle distance down um, is because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see what effect um, the changes you're making to different settings are having on the pattern piece. Um, like if I had this set to ten, you wouldn't be able to see a lot of these puckers and wrinkles that are happening and a lot of the more subtle elastic effects um, as well. And again, if you look at the, even though this is set to a particle distance of two, if we go down here to our miscellaneous and look at our actual uh, face count and vertex count, which is 3,600 and 2,100 for the vertex count, if you compare that to um, this pattern piece here, um, which is 3,000 face count and 1,600, even though this is a particle distance of 10 and this is a particle distance of two. So it really matters. Um, what matters is the overall number of polygons, not the uh, not the actual um, particle distance, um, like in absolute terms. Okay, so I've got that set down to two. And when we're done, we'll probably set this back up to like four or five until we're ready for a final render, which then you can turn everything back down to where it should be to get the best detail. Okay, so a couple problems we're having here is you're getting this really weird kind of bubbling effect on the on the um, on this outer layer here, and the reason is is because this outer piece is basically pulling the under piece, and the under piece is pulling the outer piece, but they're they're the forces pulling against them are even, so neither one is winning. What we want to do is have this pattern piece win the pulling war, so this pattern piece will be the same length, um, and this piece will be compressed, and this piece will not be compressed. So the way we do that is to take these two lines here, and we're going to turn on the elastic. And make sure your simulation is on when you turn on elastic. And I want to set my um, elastic ratio to 100. So 100%. So that means it'll pull, the elastic will pull to a length that is 100% of this length. So I'm going to set that up to 100. And then when we simulate, you can see that it just kind of, it's okay. So let's simulate now. You can see that it just pulls it um, to a ratio of 100. And so it will just fit really nice and it won't have that bubbling effect. And that's that's why we do that. Now, the other thing, um, it's not really puckering very well and that has to do with the material. Um, I'm going to take this material up in my material thing and just copy it. And I'm going to change the preset to uh, denim lightweight, which I found works fairly well to get the puckering effect that I want. And then I'm going to apply the denim lightweight to this outer material. So that's, it's hard to tell, but it's starting to pucker a little bit and it's giving that effect, but it's not, okay, there we go. Now it's starting to pucker. Give it, you gotta give it a second. And it's not exactly what we want. So if we look at this, um, this piping in the front isn't like a dome. It's actually kind of goes up and over like, like this. And it's kind of flat on top and curved down at the sides. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take both of these lines on this piece here, and we're going to right click and offset the pattern outline. And we're going to offset by one millimeter. And we're going to do two offsets and don't forget to hit that create internal line checkbox. So now that creates two internal lines on the side. So it widens it out and creates these two internal lines. Now what we want to do is take these two internal lines and we want to apply a fold angle to them. Oops. 
and we want the fold angle to go down and turn your fold rendering off on those. So then it, the folds will kind of fold down like on the edges there and then simulate. And now that's giving us a pretty good puckering effect all along here. That's kind of what we're looking for. Okay. That might actually be too long. So I'm going to shorten this up. You don't uh, need a whole lot of extra length on this. So let's try it a little bit less. So just get a little bit more, and maybe more than that. Okay. Right, so now we're just getting that really nice kind of subtle puckering effect in there. Um, it's about actually what I started with. Okay, now we're just going to copy and symmetrically paste that across and superimpose over. And then I will turn the, uh, let's see. Uh, on these outer pieces, I want to Right, turn the skiv back on about, let's try 95% here. Particle distance on here. Okay. Maybe I will pull this down a bit more. Oops. Ooh, maybe too much. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, too much. Anyway, um, that's basically how you make the under part of the uh, uh, the undershirt part of this uniform. So next up, I'm going to show you how to make the the jumpsuit. So I will get to that in just a second. So I will see you then. All right. All right, time for the uh, the rest of it. So before we really get started, I do want to talk about something really quick that um, I personally think is totally wrong um, in the way a lot of people uh, kind of do this. So what we need to do is make the jumpsuit on top of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deactivate the pattern and I'm going to hide it, um, the underside. And I think this is the right way to do it. Um, what I see a lot of people do when they're, they're making something like a shirt with a jacket on top is they will freeze the pattern underneath. And again, I think, I think this is wrong because one, there's just the technical part of it where freezing doesn't actually, um, remove the uh, garment from the simulation um, from the way it's calculated. Like it, things are still or, uh, interacting with the frozen garment. And so if you've got something like a really complex gar uh, garment that you're working on, um, freezing it doesn't really speed up the simulation at all. Deactivating actually does remove the, uh, remove the, the fabric and the pattern from the simulation. So it's, uh, essentially, it's like it's not even there anymore, and it will speed things up. That's that's a small part of it. The bigger and main reason you shouldn't freeze to work on top of something is because of fit. Um, when something is frozen, obviously it's you're you're working on top of it, and when you think about real clothes, when you're modeling a jacket to wear in real life, you don't um, put clothes on top of it to make it fit correctly. You fit it right to your body and then the jacket is going to smush down your clothes. Um, and if you model with the frozen garment on top, it really affects the fit and it's much more difficult to make it uh, tight enough so that when um, the clothes are layered, they look correct. Now, you might say, well, I don't really wanna mess around with having to like try and push my jacket out to the outside and, and everything else. But the layer function 
is actually really, really powerful in uh, Marvelous Designer and Clo. Like if you set your outside layer to layer one and your inside layer to zero, layer zero, it will really just push it out and it does it extremely well. So that is why I think when you're making layers of clothes like this, you should deactivate them and just work on your mannequin. And then when you're ready to combine them, turn everything back on and use your layers to layer them out. And it's just going to look much better because it, everything is going to fit tighter and it's just going to have a much better appearance. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to deactivate and hide my clothes. And to um, hide your clothes, you can right click on here and hide 3D pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm just going to add a new fabric. Um, I'm just going to keep this as uh, the default, let's see, like the default fabric. And I will apply just a light gray texture to it. All right. And now I'm just going to kind of draw out another really basic um, bodice form. So I'm going to just uh, probably fast forward this part. Okay, so I've got this uh, kind of basic top here. Now, the first thing you, you're probably gonna notice is these shoulders are very uh, sloppy. They're, they're not fitted particularly well. And that's because um, there is a lot of shoulder padding happening in, um, in these uniforms. And we will be putting shoulder pads in because shoulder pads are something that Marvelous Designer and Clothe 3D do very well. And they're actually really easy to make. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. And the shoulder pads are extremely important here uh, because when you look at these uniforms, um, let's see, that's a good photo. Okay. So right here, if you look at the, the shoulders, there is very little curvature going out. Um, like, even on my t-shirt, you can see that there, there's a pretty significant bump here. On this uniform, it's nearly straight down. So the shoulder actually has to come out all, almost to the edge of the edge of the shoulder there. And then um, the sleeve can come straight off because if the sleeve ended right here, the it would kind of curve over and we don't want that. But in order to make them go out that far, you need to have that shoulder padding to hold it up, as well as just um, in general, there you can tell there is a lot of shoulder padding happening here. So we're gonna put in those shoulder pads. And um, I think first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, divide up the top and the bottom. And I think I'll do a little bit of shaping on the, the rest of it as well. I'll just put in these seams on the front and the back and just kind of uh, fit things together real quick here. So again, I'm going to fast forward this. This is just um, kind of adjusting the pattern pieces to make the shape. And I, this, I'm not going to go into detail about this stuff. There's, I, I think I've got some other videos that explain how I go about doing this, but um, this isn't what that video is about. So I'm just going to create the, the shape of this um, real quick here. So I will, I will do that and then time lapse it.
Okay, so it looks like I got this um, okay. It's fitted all right. Um, so it would take a lot longer than just this video to really explain a lot of the fit stuff that I'm, I'm doing here <laughs> and the technical kind of way this this works. Um, there, there's some other videos that kind of explain pattern making a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I guess the best way to, <laughs> is to go and look at a pattern for, um, like go on Pinterest or Google image search and you can find basic patterns of something that's kind of form fitting like this. And you can kind of see how these patterns interact with each other. Um, like right in here, this is the area that gives the bust a little extra room and then you kind of cinch it down at the waist. And the smallest part of your pattern down here should hit at the smallest part of the waist. Um, uh, just little things like that. It's it's more of just a, you'll get used to it as you go along. Okay. So one thing that I do wanna look for uh, that's important here is this shoulder seam. I want, uh, that you need to be careful of is to try and get this shoulder seam right in the middle, in the middle of the, the shoulder there. Um, you don't want it too far forward or too far back because you want each of these panels to be evenly split apart. So that's something to watch out for. And uh, now let's go ahead and put these shoulder pads in. Okay, so to create shoulder pads, what you need to do is first take these two pieces right here and if they're not lined up, um, you need to line them up. And the easiest way to do that is to click both of those lines right there, right click and go to match up. And to start or to end, it shouldn't matter because they should be the same length, but if they're not, just make them the same length and make everything match up just like that. All right, now let's talk about shoulder pads and the way they work. The way shoulder pads work um, is with the uh, additional collision, additional thickness collision. And that's the little air bubble around the pattern piece. Um, and this is, okay. So if you go into the library, um, the uh, Marvelous Designer or Clo 3D library, there, right here, I have it off in a separate window, but there is a hardware and trims um, menu option. And there is a shoulder pads folder and they have shoulder pads in here that you can actually import and see how they, uh, see how they work. So basically, I can't, let me see. No, it's, it's gonna make, can I just drop that in there? No, I don't wanna open a new, Okay, add it, okay. There we go, okay. So these are the shoulder pads and all they are is this, it's a piece of fabric that uh, looks like, let's just match everything up like that. It's a piece of fabric that they made in this shape here and then they cut this off and then they cut this off and cut this off and that off. And then what they did is they applied additional, or they applied thickness to um, to these. And I guess they added rendering thickness too, but I'm not gonna add rendering thickness because we don't need the uh, actual visual because they'll be hidden. So it's the collision thickness you look at. So this outer piece is a collision thickness of 8.5. And this middle one is 7.5. This one is 5.5 and this outer piece is 2.5. And so when you put this under the clothes, this will create a shoulder pad effect. Likewise, um, the shoulder pad has its own custom physical property. And so what I did is I just took this uh, physical property preset and I saved it. So you can just click that save button there and saved, saved it as a new fabric called shoulder pad, which is um, kind of a stiffer fabric. And so that's how you get the shoulder pad fabric. And so that's all a shoulder pad is in Marvelous Designer and Clo. Now to uh, create our own, it's very, very simple because I don't know if that shoulder pad is gonna fit very well on this, this model. I wanna just make one and they're very easy to make. So we've got this all lined up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create an internal line from here to here and from there to there. Okay. And I will turn on my internal line so that I can see them. And now what I wanna do is just kind of get them in the right position where I think this shoulder pad is going to go. So right about to there. 
And I want this to curve in. And I don't want to go to go too high up on the shoulder. I think I want this to go a little bit lower here. Okay, so let's go ahead and so you've got this kind of this shape that's right. So now what I need to do is I need to kind of match these up again and get these two lines to match. So I'm just going to take one and snap it so that they connect up there. So those lines are connected and these lines just go ahead and right click on them and extend to pattern outline to make sure they go all the way to the pattern outline. Now the reason it's important to match these up is because we're going to uh, trace this shape. So I'm going to grab all these lines and it's very important to make sure that um, like they're all touching, all the points are touching or intersecting. So there is one complete shape um, highlighted here. And then you're gonna go up to your trace tool, right click on it, oops, let's see. Is that my trace tool? No, that's my seam allowance, there's my trace tool. Okay, so right click and trace as a pattern and that will create that shape as a pattern. And that is going to be our shoulder pad. So now just go ahead and sew this on here. So I'm going to sew it on and I'm gonna sew from the middle there and the middle there so it stops right there. I'll stop right there and then superimpose under. So I'm just gonna get this um, in place to where I want it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, let's see, go ahead and I will take these two lines here and I will offset as internal line, maybe seven or eight, that's fine. So I just get that little edge there. And then I will take both those lines and I will cut and sew. So make sure that's cut and sewn. And then I'll take this outer um, piece right here and I will right click and offset as internal line, offset, three times, and I just want those to be about evenly divided up. Yeah, I'll be sure three is fine. Okay, and then all you have to do is take those lines and cut and sew. And now we basically have a shoulder pad, and we, one we know that fits right into whatever we're making. So that's, that's really all there is to making a shoulder pad. Well, the pattern anyway. So now what we're going to do is, um, oh, and I wanna make sure that all these outside seams here that touch on this edge are set to a turned sewing angle. Then I'm going to start adding additional uh, collision thickness. So this outside, I'm actually gonna crank that up to like 10. I think I'll change this to six. And I'm not changing the rendering thickness because again, it doesn't really matter uh, because I'm actually gonna make these invisible anywhere so they don't clip through. Or if they do, you can't see it. Um, which is thickness four, maybe three. So I, I need a lot of height here. I need significantly less height here and so on and so forth going up. And so let's go ahead and render that and see what happens. There you go. That's a pretty okay shoulder pad. So if this is wrong, like if you had this set to eight, and you simulate it, you get that little bump there. And so you could just, you know, go in and adjust these as you need to create the, the shape that you want. And then we're just going to take all these and copy and symmetrically paste them over and then set that underneath. And let that go in, there we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I actually don't want the, um, the shoulder pads sewn to these lines here. So I'm just gonna delete this sewing. And so it's just sewn onto the edge and that'll you know get rid of that kind of crease in there. So now you just have, uh, maybe I didn't come down. Oh no, this should be fine once I get the sleeve in, I think. 
And I think I'm gonna turn folder rendering off. I think I'm done with those lines, but I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna leave them for now. Okay, so there's our, our shoulder pads. Okay, now I can put the sleeves in. So let me just go ahead and put in some sleeves and I'm going to see, move these shoulder pads away. Move the shoulder pads away. And I will reset this rotation. And I'll make some sleeve shapes here real quick. And let's change my fabric back to this. So I'm just gonna make some sleeve shapes here. And I know that looking at this, I need to come at this angle a bit less. And pull that back a bit, so. And again, I'm not really, uh, I'm gonna adjust this sleeve shape once I get it on there. So let's just sew it on and see how it looks. Oops. Okay, so it's obviously much too small. So let's go ahead and just raise that up and out a bit. See, so that could be a little bit smaller. So I'll just lower the cap height Ooh, too much. Okay, up by 0 0.1. Let's see how we're looking. Okay. And that looks, that looks okay. Yeah, it comes up and around and back okay. And could be a little, we don't need quite as much here because it comes out, so. Now uh, let's see, so this, uh, okay, yeah, we don't need quite as much um, going out this way because, yeah, it should be pushed in a bit, okay. All right, that's good enough. Um, Hmm, is it? I wanna, no, 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 that's fine because yeah, yeah. Okay, so now what we need to do is actually put in um, some uh, shoulder pads in the sleeves as well because there is padding in the sleeves as well. Um, but first what I wanna do is actually I wanna divide these sleeves up because the sleeves are also cut. So since these um, top pieces are cut here, um, there is a sewing that is goes from this part and this sewing goes from this part. So you know exactly where it divides on the sleeve. So all we need to do is right click on it and add a point on the pattern to the end and the same thing on the other side, add point on pattern end or start actually. And then we can just add, let's optimize the curve points real quick. Okay, that's better. And we'll just add some of these uh, curve points to create this thing here and try and get it the right shape. It doesn't actually go down as much as you think. It's about right there, that'll be fine. And then you take both of those and cut and sew. Now to make the shoulder pad in the, uh, the the sleeve here, that's pretty easy. I'm just gonna take those two lines. We're gonna offset as internal line uh, by once, just once here. And we'll offset by, yeah, not much. And then I'm just gonna layer clone under and remove the linked editing and delete the sewing. And we're going to cut this piece, this uh, piece here off. So, We've got a piece sewn underneath here. And actually I want to delete that sewing too. Or no, let's keep that. And I'll just sew on. Okay, so it's sewn on under there. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's see, I think I want to just offset this direction. Or no, the other way. Offset here. So I'm gonna offset from this curve and I'm just gonna offset twice like that. And then we're gonna take those, cut and sew, and we're going to apply this uh, shoulder pad material. 
And again, we're going to add some collision thickness. So uh, I'm going to crank that up to like eight and then five and three on those. And let's look at that. Okay, so that helps uh, fill out that shoulder pretty nicely. Now, the problem we're having is that you've got this little thing right here. So what we need to do is, um, okay, we need to sew this um, uh, shoulder pad to this shoulder pad. We don't want them sewn to the sleeves themselves. We want them to be uh, just kind of loose in there. So go ahead and take your sewing um, on this top shoulder pad, which is only sewn to this outer edge now, and make sure you get those two pieces, and delete it. So delete that sewing. And uh, oh, what we need to do is actually match up this top point, and uh, there is no top point here. So that's an important point we need to get in there. So I'm just gonna look at this sewing, and I know that this sewing right here, whoops, not that one. This one um, is the uh, top point. So hang on, we need to figure this out real quick. Uh, how do we do this? Okay, so what I'm, I'm just gonna uh, kind of do this weird way. I'm gonna add point to intersection here because I know, okay, and then I'm going to uh, whoops, click on this, and I'm going to add a point to the pattern on the end. And that way, I know that this is 74.4. And so since this dot is this dot here, I need to get this length. And so I can just go up here and right click and put in 74.4. Okay, so now I have that dot in the correct spot. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that sewing and I'm going to delete uh, all this edge sewing. Okay, so now the shoulder pads aren't sewn to anything, but we need to sew them to each other. So I'm going to start from this uh, middle point and I'm going to sew out. Middle point, oh. And since this piece is shorter, I need to start from there and it's going to end there. And that way those uh, shoulder pads will match up. And again, start from there. Oh, I now start from here and go out. Okay, now those shoulder pads are sewn together. Now, what's really important is you need to set your sewing line type to turned so that they will kind of hinge freely rather than kind of try and, you know, match up this way. This turned sewing line type is like a loose hinge and that will let it. Um, uh, bend fold over much better. Okay, so now let's go ahead and simulate that. Oops, and pull that in. And now you see we've got a very nice, strong shoulder. And that is how you create that nice shoulder on there, as well as this nice, straight, um, uniform sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to copy and oh, let's copy the sleeve too. Copy and symmetrically paste. Okay, that's in there. There we go. And I can delete those lines. Okay, now what I want to do is uh, let's go ahead and apply the right fabrics here. And I'm just going to lengthen this sleeve out. So let's move these sleeves up, move these shoulder pads out of the way. these just lengthen them out that might be too much if you lengthen them out too much well they're gonna screw up anyway so we'll have to use the arrangement points to get these in the right position anyway so just use your arrangement points to do that oh nope nope oh that worked pretty well okay cool worked really well and then I'll double click there and kind of scale these down so 
Let's see these fit real nice. Add a bit of shaping to it here. Okay. That looks okay. So let's go ahead and um Oh, one more note when you're doing this, when you're um, putting this uniform together, is you don't want your model to have the arms out. You want the arms down like this and even lower. Um, if you watch the show, they almost, the, the, <laughs> the actors almost never put their arms out just because these uniforms are made in such a way that if you raise your arms too high, those shoulder pads and shoulders are just going to scrunch up so bad. And... If you're trying to make it with the arms straight out, nothing is going to fit right about those shoulders um, just because of the way they're made. So watch out for that. In fact, it actually does tend to look better when the uh, oops, when the arms are down by their side at this resting position here. Okay. Let's go ahead and just cut the this uh, V shape out real quick. So just cut that. Okay. Simulate, and then let's just we'll just go ahead and uh, turn everything back on, and I'll show you how to kind of make this go over. So one interesting thing about layers is that you can actually go negative with layers. Like if you have something that you want on the very bottom, you can actually set it to the layer negative one and it'll go to the bottom. So I'm gonna take all of these pieces and I'm going to set the layer to layer negative one and then simulate. This should get in there, and there you go. And you can see layers do a really good job of pushing things where they're supposed to go. Okay, so let's turn that off and uh, turn everything back to layer zero. Okay, and so that's that's what it's looking like so far. Now I'm gonna take a real quick break, but it won't be a break for you. Um, and then we'll get started on the uh, padding on the shoulders and all the detailing and finish it off. So I will see you in just a sec. All right, time to get started on the, uh, the detailing and the padding here. Now I was looking at this and I realized I kind of did these uh, shoulder pads over here wrong. What I needed to do was have this uh, be puffier and this be less puffier. So I'm going to change this to like three instead of eight and four and then I'll pull this back to six. And so that'll give me a little bit of a just a cur little bit of curve out and I think that'll look a lot better. Yeah, that's that's much better. Okay, there we go. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this undershirt on since I'm not really working on top of it any anymore. Um, but I am going to turn down the particle distance on some of this stuff uh, just to help it on these. Pull those back up to 10 so it won't slow down my sim quite so much. But for now, I'll leave that undershirt on. Um, and we'll just continue working. Okay, the shoulders. So the shoulders really aren't hard. There's just a lot of uh, internal lines that we have to make. So first let me, I probably need to bring this up a bit. So let me just do that real quick. Uh, so I think this needs to come up a bit. That a little bit higher and then bring the neck up a bit too. Let's see if that works. And I think I will pull that in because I want, a, I think there is just a tiny bit of a 
a peek on that collar right there. Okay. I think I need the back neck to be higher too. Okay, that looks all right. Okay, now, uh, okay, we are done with these internal lines, so we can delete those. Let's um, go ahead and look at uh, this reference here. So I've got this trim around the edge. Now, this trim is actually a different fabric and a different material. I'm not going to make it a different material right now or make it like a separate piece because it is kind of a, a separate piece of fabric that's sewn on. Um, if I were doing this on my own, I probably would, but that's a little bit too much detail work for this. We're just going to add in our internal lines and layer clone over. So to add in these internal lines, uh, what we need to do is go ahead and grab all of these edges and we just want these outside edges and we're going to right click and offset as internal line. And we just want one offset and we want to offset about 10, maybe 11 millimeters. That looks about right. 11 millimeters. Yeah. We'll call it 11 millimeters and I'll convert those to curve points. So let's just convert those to curve points and we will extend, uh, to the pattern, to, uh, the pattern outline. Okay. So now what we want to do is put in these uh, lines that go across. And there are, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 11. And it looks like they actually, they actually go vertical. So they don't follow this. They go vertical up and down. So to do that, I think we will just create a single internal line here. And I'm going to turn on my visible internal lines, which is this little button right in there. So they show up on the pattern. And I want to turn this to make them appear that they go straight up and down. And then, okay. Yeah, that looks like they're just going to go all the way over. Okay. So once you do that, I'm not going to extend this out right now. I'm just going to offset the uh, pattern outline. So offset as internal line and I need to reverse the direction and I'll reverse them by, let's call it about 17 millimeters. That looks about right. And then go all the way down. And I probably should have, hang on, not yet. So I am going to uh, just go ahead and extend to the pattern outline so it goes all the way along. And then we'll do that again, about 17, and go all the way down. Okay. And then we can right click on all of these and extend trim to pattern outline. And that one is outside, so we don't need that. Okay, so now we have all these uh, internal lines in. Um, let's make sure this looks right. Does that look right? I think that looks correct. Okay, now I don't want these internal lines to um, actually go across this internal line here. So uh, the new version of Clo has a really cool feature called extend and trim to internal line. So we can do that and that will, that should, but it didn't. Let's try that again. Extend trim to internal line. Okay, it's not going to the internal line. Let's try just one at a time. Okay, so this isn't working sometimes. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, if you're using Marvelous Designer anyway, you don't have that feature yet. So um, 
the way that you can do that is just double click on this line to grab um, this internal line like this and then right click on it and add points to intersection. So that just adds a bunch of points. Oh, I did that wrong. Hang on. Sorry. We want to grab all of all of those lines, but we don't want this line. Okay, so you have all these lines and then you right click on it and add point to the intersection. So now all these lines have points on the intersections. Now what we need to do is just delete all these points on the end. So you can just grab those points and delete them. And that will leave uh, leave them the correct width like that. Okay. So now we just need to do that on the back as well. Let me look at this and make sure I'm not missing any important step here. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm just gonna do the same thing on this, this back piece. Uh, we need to, uh, let's see, offset, not that one, but this one by 11 and only one offset. Okay, that's right. And now I'm going to offset from this middle piece here. So I will offset by 17 and I'll just go all the way down. Oh, and I left extend on. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, and we don't need that one. And then again, come on, select everything. No, that doesn't want to extend to the internal line. Oh, well, okay. We'll just do the same thing where we uh, add points to the intersection, delete them. Now, unfortunately, these don't line up at the top. Um, don't think they do in the actual it's hard to get a view from up to, up at the top but I'm not gonna worry about those not uh, should I worry about it is there anything I can do about it there, the thing is there's not a lot you can actually do um, easily I guess I could line them up uh, do I want to though Let me do the back here The problem with lining them up is that then the angles of this change. So then if you lined them all up, the angles would be more like this and the angles should be vertical uh, on the front and the back. So I think I'm just gonna leave this the way it is and kind of just be okay with it. Although if I change, mm, No, we're just gonna leave it and be okay with it. Okay, so we've got all those uh, internal lines created. Now, of course, what we do, what everybody loves to do, this is everyone's favorite part, is to layer clone over. So let's right click on it and layer clone over. And we will remove the linked editing and turn off our outlines like that. And there's not much detail yet, and that is uh, because um, the particle distance isn't low enough. So once you lower the particle distance down to five, again, the detail becomes much more apparent, and you can see. Now you can see that this is actually puffing out, even though there is no pressure applied. And the reason that things puff out like this, even though there's no pressure, is because of the uh, collision uh, thickness right here. And that's at 2.5, and each each one of these patterns has a collision distance of uh, additional collision dis thickness of 2.5. So that means there's like an air bubble of 2.5 around each pattern, and that creates this puffiness. So you can actually create more puffiness without adding pressure by adjusting the uh, additional collision thickness. So if I turn that up to like five, that's that's a lot though. It's going to do that, but it's also going to kind of um, change um it's, it's going to pull on that pattern and so it's going to uh just uh, 
distort it. And so you don't want too much collision thickness there to keep the uh, everything correct. So I'm just going to turn this down to about three because I do want a little bit of extra collision thickness in there. Okay. So that looks okay. And then I will just go ahead and take this and copy and symmetrically paste and superimpose over. Okay, now the other thing I wanna do um, is I wanna take this outer sewing that automatically gets applied when you layer clone over and delete it. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna delete it on the other one too. And I'm going to re-sew. And the reason is I want these edges here to be not be a turned sewing angle. I actually want them to be a custom angle so that they'll kind of fold over onto themselves. Or it'll give it a little bit more rounded of an edge on that outside. So uh, I'm going to re-sew these. And I'm going to sew from there to there. And that one needs to be turned. So that to turned. This one to this one turned this to this turned but this one to this one and this to this I want those to be custom angles and I'll do the same thing on the back here so here to here turned 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 but these I do want to be custom angles and that will allow um, a little bit of roundness in here. And then I'm going to add in some uh, on the outer one here. Just going to add some internal lines and with a distance of one millimeter. That'll help it smooth that edge a little bit. Oops. Two lines at two. These are two lines at one. Turn the fold angle down slightly. That's just going to help round that edge out a little bit there. Now, I forgot to do something here. Um, and Okay, so I might have to go back and do this. Um, but you can see when you apply this layer clone over, and when you have this, um, this these two layers pushing apart on each other, it kind of pulls um, the fabric. And when it pulls, when the fabric gets pulled like this, it kind of bends inward. And you can see that here. And um, think of it like a bridge where the weakest point is in the middle. And in the middle here, it's getting pulled and it's kind of sagging this way. So what I probably should have done and what I usually do and I forgot to do is create a bit of a curve this way to um, account for the curvature that happens when it gets pulled in. Um, and so I'm actually gonna real quick go back and do that. And um, so I'll just fast forward all this and, and try and show you the difference that makes because this V is very important to get right. There's a few features on these this outfit or you know, on a lot of these costumes and outfits that are really iconic that you have to get right. Otherwise it just doesn't look right. And when this V is kind of like in this, you know, curve, out, outward curvature like that, it doesn't look right. So it needs to be a little uh, straight or curved in a little bit. So let me just do that real quick. All right, so I got this um, set back up here. Um, and I added this slight bit of curvature. I also kind of adjusted the collar down just a little bit because I think it was too high up. Um, and now what I'm going to do is, uh, hang on, let's turn these back to a particle distance of five. We'll look at that. And, oh. Okay, so I actually have these. Um, so I changed my shrinkage weft and warp on these to 102. So let me just turn this back to 100 real quick and show you why I did that. Okay. 
Oh, and one other thing I'm going to do is I am going to change this fabric from the uh, just the default fabric, and I'm going to switch it to like uh, just I think I'll go with a knit cotton jersey again for these because this is just a really light kind of knit material on top. It looks like kind of a, a soft knit. So we'll change that to knit cotton jersey. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that my par the uh, let's move these things up here. Just move those out of the way. I'm thinking my part or collision distance on these uh, panels here is too high, so I'm actually going to turn these down to 1.5 on all of them. So, oops, 1.5. So my additional collision thickness, I'm going to set to 1.5 there. Okay, that might be okay because these bridges aren't really, they're not that um, defined. They're a little bit defined. And I do want to exaggerate it just a little bit, but I think I'll change the additional collision thickness on all that to 1.5. And then what I'm gonna do, as I had before, is I'm gonna set my uh, shrinkage, weft, and warp up to 102% and 102%, just to expand it, just, or actually I don't want to do all of the, uh, all those panels, just the panels that are on top. And I I do only want to do the ones that are on top because if I did, I, I want the ones on top to be slightly bigger so you'll get a little bit of that puckering and just a little bit of extra volume on the top shoulder pads. So 102 and 102. Okay, and that just gives that a little bit of extra. And when you turn your particle distance down to like, well, let's see if I can turn this down to three right now. You'll you should see a little bit of extra uh, nice detail in there. And obviously, I'm not going to keep this at a particle distance of three, but I'm just going to check it to see how it looks. Okay, so that's giving us some pretty good definition in there, and uh, yeah, looks all right. put that back to a particle distance of five. Okay, so let's do the side shoulder now. And the side shoulder has some vertical uh, stripes on there. So let's grab this piece and, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from right here at this segment point we made it and make a line straight down. And I want this, yeah, that's that's fine. I, I think I'll just go from that corner to that corner. Okay. And then I will offset each side and I wanna offset by 17. So I'll just offset that many times from one direction and then from the other direction. So I'll hit that reverse direction check mark, check box. And I don't just want like a tiny little triangle there, so I'm not even gonna add that last piece. Okay, uh, so let's also add in our, let's reverse that direction there. Oh, and you know what I should have done? Okay, so it'll be okay, but that's a little bit of a mistake I made there. So this line right here should be connecting, and I guess I can still kind of add that in, but I'm not gonna worry about that now. Um, it'll be fine. Okay, let's just uh, extend oops, these out. Outline there, and we'll add, add points to the intersection, delete these. And then I will lock the pattern outline so I can grab that and it does it won't grab the uh, segment point. Okay. And let's see, anything else? Nope. Okay, we can layer clone over. Same thing we did before. And this is going to be a collision thickness of 1.5. Let's remove the linked editing. And I don't, the sewing here is gonna be fine. So I'm not gonna change the sewing. 
So just leave that alone. And we got to turn our particle distance down to five. Okay. All right. So now let's look at our reference again on the shoulder and we have these two little lines right in there. Um, so I'm gonna add those in real quick. Wait a minute. Is this under? Did I layer clone under? I guess, okay, that's fine. Or is it, wait a minute. No, no, I want this to be on the over. Okay. Right? I think I want that over. Okay, so I want that to be 10. And I want this one to be five. Right. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to add in um, on this piece up here, the top piece, an offset here, oh, actually all the way along the edge. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into uh, a lot of the um, internal line detailing that you can do, but there is a lot of internal line detailing you could do, like, you know, these, these little seams up here and things. And that's just, again, internal lines, fold angles, and different things like that. Okay, so we're just gonna say that's good enough. Again, I, this is it's already gonna be a long one. So I'll copy and symmetrically paste it over to the other side. Okay. You know, I think maybe I'll add a bit more of a collision, additional click collision thickness on this lower piece. So I'll bring that back up to 2.5, just to give that a little bit more definition on the, the shoulder over there. Okay, looks all right. Okay, so that's basically how you make that top padded bit. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just make the uh, the pants. So even though this is a, a jumpsuit, I am going to make the top and the pants separately. And then once I get the top and the pants together, I'll just merge everything together. It's much easier that way. So I'm gonna fast forward this part again. I'm just gonna be making uh, basic pants and uh, See you, in, see you in a minute.
Okay, so I've uh, made some basic pants here, and you can tell by the the this uh, reference here that there is seams going down the front as well as the back. Um, there are seams that go all the way along the front and the back, so that's why I divided those up like that. So let's go ahead and connect everything. So I'm going to select everything, and we're going to unhide it and activate it. And now I'm just going to kind of uh, pull these things up and down until they more or less meet and then we'll merge them all together. So nothing super, super fancy about this right here. I'm just going to kind of pull these up and I think we'll deactivate this for now. So that's not in the way. And then once we get everything uh, merged and set up, we'll, we will have to uh, kind of readjust the fit a little bit because this is slightly affecting our fit. Oops. I'm just gonna delete those curve points. So this piece matches up with this piece over here. So we'll just put everything kind of where it should be. So I want this to sew onto there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I kind of want to match these up. So obviously this here needs to be this way. So it's a little bit wider there and it'll fit more closely or this one needs to be more narrow maybe we'll make this one a little bit more narrow here and pull this back and I'm just going for a rough fit right now I'm not doing anything exact so that's off by 1.4 that's fine uh, let's check this one. So here to here, that's off by 10. So I think we will, let's see, pull this one up here out just a bit. Here we off by 2.9 and we'll sew that to that. And this should probably go up a bit more. Off by 10 there, so uh, we'll pull this one out or in. Let's go in on that. Oh, too much. Okay, let's off by 2.6. Okay, so those are fitting together okay. Uh, back obviously needs to come down. Let's do that. Oh, that's a lot, maybe too much. Too much. Okay. Okay. Now the cool thing about merging in uh, Marvelous Designer and Clo is that the lines don't actually have to match perfectly to merge. I can merge this and it's just gonna kind of average these two lengths out and it's gonna fill in the gap. So if I right click on that and hit merge, you can see that it just merges like that. And again, we're gonna merge here. And here. And here. And even though those line lengths didn't match up, they, they just kind of uh, average out. They take the average and merge it together. And uh, that fits really well. So that's, that's how you make a jumpsuit. Now I do have to adjust some of this fit in here. I think this uh, crotch is way too low. Yeah, so I need to raise that up. So let's go 
do that. And then we'll check the uh, sizing on everything else. Let's raise this up here. So let's straighten these out. Check our fit everywhere. Uh, maybe I want to bring this in right back in here. Like uh, right there. Let's kind of pull this in. Pull that in. I'll tighten that in a little bit. And then I want to check my sewing lengths. So this is off by 0 0.7. From here to here, we're off by 0 0.2. 2.5 there, but that's okay. And off by 1.6. So all our sewing lengths are matching up pretty well. And we'll just let that go. And I think I need, this is a little tight around the hips, so I'm going to add in just a little bit of, a little bit more room around the hips. Because again, just, oh, that's, oh, maybe not, let's try and fix that. It's right in here, oh, I see what happened. I, Okay, that's too low, so this needs to be raised up a bit. Yeah. That's too much. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but then that kind of... Okay, so we need... Yeah, we're going to have to... So now it's just a lot of uh, tweaking and adjusting uh, the fit. And pants are never easy to, to fit. Just, I, I don't quite have the hang of it yet. I don't want it to ride up too much, um, which it is. So let's kind of smooth that out. And that's going to add a lot of fabric right there, which I don't want either. Uh, hmm. Let's just pull this in and try pulling that out. Lengthening this a bit as well, not that much. Okay, that's that's not terrible. I'll I'll just leave it there. Um, it's a little baggy right in there, so I'm gonna kind of bring that in and raise it up. Remove the bagginess a little bit right from there, hopefully. Okay. Well, it's a little bit, yeah, it fits not terribly. Okay, so that's basically uh, the process to making that jumpsuit. Uh, I know I, I went pretty fast on that and I didn't explain a lot of why I was pulling and why I was, you know, changing the shapes. Um, that again is pattern making. Um, study uh, lots of patterns and and then just try and tweak the shapes so you can figure out why patterns look uh, the way they do, and it'll help you understand 
how to alter patterns um, and just play around with them a lot. Try, try adjusting curves and seeing how it fits and seeing how it changes the changes the fit. Um, okay. Anyway, let's see what else do we need to do here. Oh yeah, let's put some of the uh, the sleeve cuffs on. So we've got these sleeve cuffs. So let's just put them on real quick because they should be pretty easy. So I'm. Let's see. Do I want? I'll add a little extra length to the sleeve so that it bunches up. I, I do like like it when the sleeve bunches up a bit. So I'm going to offset the pattern outline here and we're just going to offset it once by, you know, just a little bit for now. And don't forget to create that internal line. And so then you just cut and sew that piece off. And then we can just kind of lengthen it to the length we want. go up same thing on the other side and then so the uh, the wrist cuff together down here like this. And then uh, let's see if I can get a better picture of this. Okay, so this is kind of like, you know, a double layer. So we'll go ahead and layer clone over. Or actually, I think first we'll just uh, take both of these lines, distribute internal line between segments, and we'll get this segment right in the middle there. And that will be the part that we cut out to apply the, uh, the green fabric to. And then we will uh, layer clone over. And I'm going to remove the linked editing. And I think I do just want this to kind of roll under. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that sewing um, from the layer clone and I'm going to re-sew it top to top and bottom to bottom. And I want this top piece to be a turned sewing angle. And then I'm going to flip the normals and merge the pattern together like that. Okay. Okay, let me look at what else. So I think this, uh, this cuff is also just a little bit uh, smaller than the wrist. So I'll just shrink that wrist collar down a little bit. And I think I will actually increase the size on this over here. So the sleeve is a little bit larger at the wrist. Okay. And then I will, let's see, uh, actually turn it the elastic on here, the elastic, uh, but with a ratio of 100 so that it cinches down to 100%. And we'll see if that helps any. Okay. Now a little bit probably would be better if I just, let's see, seam taped it maybe. And why is this? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong, nothing was happening and I couldn't figure out why, boy, I I've been working on this for like, five hours, um, a lot of, anyway, so, okay. All right, let's go back to the correct collar. So now stuff is happening on this one. You see, I was just working on the wrong side. All right. Okay, I better finish with this soon. Okay, let's turn my particle distance down to five. So we can have this. Okay, and that's got that little bit of a little bit of puffiness that's okay. And okay. Then we'll just um, on this this middle outside middle piece here. So this piece here, I'll take these lines and I'll trace it and just put that pattern there. Apply that kind of teal fabric and go like that and like that. And that should go 
superimpose under because that's is that flipped that shouldn't be flipped hang on why did you get flipped hang on so we got a that somehow got flipped which isn't right oh and we need to uh, reverse that sewing superimpose over here. okay there we go and now we can okay delete this side and just copy and symmetrically paste this side over to here Come on now. Oh, it's because I flipped the, uh, the, okay, hang on. I'm gonna redo this, I'm gonna fast forward all this, but I, I did this wrong because I, I flipped the normals the wrong way when I was, okay. Anyway, I, I just gotta redo this really quick. Okay, so there we go. Uh, the wrist cuffs. I, I basically did the exact same process, but I uh, flipped one of the times I merged. I flipped uh, the normals the wrong way, and they were all reversed. Anyway, uh, yeah, those are the wrist cuffs. Um, and let's go ahead and activate and hide everything, and we'll set this to layer negative one again. I'm on now. Get under there. Go on. Work yourself out. That's right. Okay. There we go. Zero. Okay. So I know I sped through the last few parts there with the cuffs and the pants and the, the rest of it. But really the most important stuff is up in here. Uh, this is this is where uh, your costume is gonna make or break it. It's the it's the undershirt with the collar and the, the thing down the front, and it's the shoulders and getting the shoulder pad right. And really, it's just this this silhouette, this kind of strong shouldered silhouette. That's that's really um, the important part. Um, I'd probably go through and add a, some more details um, on here, but the, I just want to show you the really basic way to get. Um, this this type of, of uniform made so That was a long one <laughs> I've been at this all day and kept having to start over but uh, anyway, I hope this helped you I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you can make some really cool start Starfleet uniforms uh, All right Yeah, and uh, until next time Bye